Do you ever feel that landing a cybersecurity job is too hard? Or maybe you've come across comments on Reddit or YouTube from individuals who swear that landing a cybersecurity job is impossible. This isn't because landing a cybersecurity job is different than any other field or that it's impossible, but it's just that most individuals do it wrong when they try to land their first cybersecurity job. There are five mistakes everyone makes when they try to land their first cybersecurity job. I've seen these mistakes over and over from candidates that I interview and work with every day. Fix these and I'll guarantee that you will significantly improve your chances of landing your first cybersecurity job even if you don't have a degree or any experience in IT. You'll start to feel a lot more confident and you'll generally have a lot less self-doubt. I know that because I made all of these mistakes. I'm not trying to help you to become me, I'm trying to help you to be better than me. Let's get into it. Mistake number one one is waiting too long to start applying to cybersecurity jobs. You must fix this. This one hits hard because I made this mistake myself. You start learning and maybe you do the Google Cybersecurity Certificate or CompTIA Security Plus or GRC Mastery, but then you see all of those amazing individuals who have so many certifications and so much experience. And even worse, you go on social media and then you'll run across someone who tells you that you need 20 IT certifications before you even even allowed to start learning cybersecurity. This is absolutely insane. I'm so glad I didn't have access to social media when I started learning about cybersecurity because I would have never felt ready to start applying to cybersecurity jobs. But the question is, when are you ready to start applying to cybersecurity jobs? Should you start applying right after you finish the Google cybersecurity certificate or do you need experience in help desk before you start applying? Before we answer that, let's look at why you feel you're not ready. Let's say you've just finished the first cybersecurity training course that you've done, for example, a Google cybersecurity certificate or GRC mastery, you will find that those trainings throw a lot of new concepts at you. And you'll find that it's normal to start forgetting things. And sometimes you feel like you can't remember anything because you're learning a new topic with new terminology that you're simply not used to. Or perhaps you do a job search. You click on one job and then you find that that job is asking for five years of experience, but also it's asking for cybersecurity certifications that you don't have and some of those silly certifications have experience requirement. They want you to have five years of experience before you're even allowed to be certified, which I don't agree with by the way. Which begs the question, at what point are you well and truly ready to start applying to cybersecurity jobs? Well, the truth is the reason why you feel you're not ready is because you're simply not ready. Let me explain. You are not ready to work on your own. You are not a cybersecurity expert yet. You can't secure an entire organization all on your own if you've just done one cybersecurity training. But this is where I will disagree with you. Whilst yes, you are not a cybersecurity expert, you can't run the entire cybersecurity function for an organization, but that doesn't mean you're not ready to start the process of applying to cybersecurity jobs. Yes, you will need some guidance in your first cybersecurity job and you won't be expected to do everything on your own, but that doesn't mean you're not ready to apply to cybersecurity security jobs. You're not only ready to apply to cyber security jobs, but you can't afford not to apply to cyber security jobs because if you don't apply, you will miss out on any true entry level cyber security job. But not only that, if you don't start applying, you will never gain the confidence that you need to land your first cyber security job. You might have the skills that an organization is looking for, but if you don't have the confidence to sit in an interview setting and answer questions and explain things in a calm manner, then you might bomb the interview. And the only way to gain confidence in the interview is by getting more experience doing interviews. Therefore, you need to apply to as many jobs as possible as frequently as possible. There is no reason why you shouldn't make applying to cybersecurity jobs a daily habit. This is your main goal. Now, I'm not saying you should go ahead and apply to a senior director of cybersecurity or some ridiculous senior roles, but if you find that you have some of the skills that they are asking for, then go ahead and apply. Worst thing that can happen is they might say no. And look, I get it, no one likes rejection. I personally don't like to feel rejected, but please don't let that stop you from applying. I know so many individuals who have more than enough skills, but they're so scared of hitting that apply button because they are so afraid of rejection. They are so worried what the interviewer might think of them. They're so worried what the companies think of them, which in my opinion is an irrational fear. Organizations don't care. Even if you interview and you bomb the interview, they will quickly forget about you and they 
and move on to the next candidate so yes rejection sucks but it's part of the process you will get rejected more often than what you're used to but this is the price that you need to pay to land your first cyber security job this is part of the process especially at the beginning but hold on what if a job rejects you because you don't have a degree well this is the second mistake that a lot of you make when you try to land your first cyber security job which is mistake number two trying to qualify for all the jobs everywhere in the world a few months ago i made a youtube video with my friend grant collins and in the video grant said that he landed his first cyber security job after finishing his degree what happened next was shocking i received a few emails from individuals who told me they absolutely hated the video because in my videos i say that you don't need a degree to land your first cyber security job however grant said that he landed his first cyber security job after getting a degree which unfortunately affected the confidence of some individuals who watch my video who are on a journey to try and learn cyber security and they don't have a degree so let me make this abundantly clear to you you absolutely do not need a degree to work in cyber security and even to succeed in cyber security and get those really senior cyber security roles in fact some of the biggest names in cyber security and some of the most senior individuals that i've worked with don't have degrees you can not only land your first cyber security job without a degree but you can do it a lot faster and cheaper without a degree now that we have this out of the way i want to emphasize that this doesn't mean that there won't be individuals in the world who chose to do a degree and that degree helped them land their first cyber security job their journey should have absolutely no effect on your journey i never said there is only one way to do things there are many ways to do things but my goal is to give you the fastest and cheapest way to accomplish that goal so just because someone out there in the world did a degree doesn't mean that this is the only way and this should have no effect on your journey and one more thing some organizations will still require you to have a degree some organizations not all organizations however the number of organizations that don't require a degree is increasing every single day and if you're not convinced yet on a weekly basis i post success stories from individuals from all over the world who managed to land their first cyber security job by following the advice in my videos if they can do it you can do it but my question to you is why do you feel that you absolutely must qualify for every single job everywhere in the world if there is a company out there that wants you to have a degree then you don't have a moral obligation to work for them you can have a long and a happy career independent of that company even google who is notoriously picky about who they hire traditionally they used to hire candidates who only have degrees from places like harvard and stanford but then they realized that this was stupid so now they don't require degrees anymore so if you're good enough for google then you're good enough for that medium-sized local insurance organization or healthcare institution in your city don't stress about that focus on your journey when you see a job advertised sometimes those jobs are asking for senior individuals because sometimes we need someone who knows a certain tool or have delivered projects in a certain area but often we need entry-level candidates and for those roles we almost always pick the candidate who have good communication skills who is presentable on time and yes a massive bonus if that candidate have done cyber security training or cyber security certifications especially those with lab component because they can showcase their hands-on skills if i'm interviewing two candidates for an entry-level role and unanimously every candidate tells me that they absolutely love cyber security and they are passionate about cyber security but one of the candidates have done cyber security training cyber security certifications lab-based projects whilst the other candidate have done nothing which one do you think i will pick but hold on what about that it foundation that we all need before we even work in cyber security this is the third mistake mistake number three the it foundation fallacy the notion that you need to learn it and networking and operating systems before you learn cyber security is attractive because it appears logical on the surface you know you can't secure what you don't understand and i will explain to you why this is false shortly but before i do that i personally think that this notion and this fallacy is really popular because of another sinister underlying reason and that reason is procrastination don't feel like applying to cyber security jobs because you're afraid of rejection no worries we can still convince ourselves that we are still working on that foundation working on foundation is a really great excuse to avoid doing 
doing the hard work. It's the perfect storm for procrastination and avoiding and dodging doing those difficult tasks and those difficult certifications. For example, when you're following one of the roadmaps in my video and you encounter the first challenging lab, you may start to doubt yourself. You might start to think, am I good enough? Or perhaps I don't have enough IT foundation. It's easier to leave that difficult and challenging lab and start to go back to studying easier things because they are considered foundation. So therefore, your endless pursuit of foundation may very well be your own way of procrastination or avoiding the real difficult work. Or it could just be fear. You are afraid of a difficult certification or you are afraid of getting stuck, which is totally understandable. But please, let's not kid ourselves and make it a noble pursuit of foundation because it's not. Now, as far as IT foundation is concerned, I have roadmap videos in my channels and in those roadmaps, I recommend that you do certain trainings, usually cybersecurity focused training. And in those training courses, they always cover the foundation that you need from a cyber security point of view. You don't need to work as a network engineer for two years or in help desk for three years. It's perfectly fine if you did that. Those are very respectful career paths, but they are not a requirement before you work in cyber security. Likewise, if you've done CCNA or A+, that's fantastic. Just know that they are not needed for cyber security. Those are network engineering and help desk certifications that will lead you to a help desk role or a network engineering role. But if cyber security is your your goal then you need to follow the roadmaps in my videos they have everything that you need you don't need to go outside and do extra things the courses that I curated for you will more than cover that IT foundation but not only that there is a huge area in cybersecurity which is called GRC GRC stands for governance risk and compliance this is a non-technical area of cybersecurity where you actually don't need any technical experience in fact most individuals who work in GRC in the industry don't have any technical experience and that's perfectly fine. I talked about GRC in detail in this video so please check it out. Which brings me to the next mistake. Mistake number four, you don't go to cyber security events. There are two ways to land your first cyber security job. Number one, you called apply to cyber security job. You simply hit the apply button on cyber security jobs that are advertised. The second way is where you approach hiring managers directly and you can do that in two ways. You can either do it online usually on LinkedIn where you follow organizations, you add hiring hiring managers and professionals and you send them a message expressing your interest in working in their company. I've been sending a few emails about LinkedIn in my free cybersecurity newsletter. You can sign up for free at unixguy.com. Now the second way to approach hiring managers is face to face in real life in cybersecurity events. Now both ways are valid. Online and face to face can help you land your first cybersecurity job. There are pros and cons to each method. But I personally found that showing up in person for cybersecurity events will give people a better chance to to get to know you and it will help you make a stronger impression on them. Now there are a lot of affordable and even free cybersecurity events. Simply go to meetup.com and type cybersecurity and you'll find that there are so many events that run in your city. Another favorite event of mine that's absolutely affordable is called B-Sides. There is a B-Sides event in most major cities. I highly recommend you attend those. So just go to google.com, type B-Sides and the name of your city and you will probably find a B-Sides event happening in your city. In fact, one of the members of my Discord community, she followed my cybersecurity analyst roadmap and she went to two B-side events. And in the second one, she made a connection with a hiring manager who helped her land her first cybersecurity job. So please make it a habit to show up to cybersecurity events. It gives you a chance to talk to industry experts, to network with people, but also to listen to what other industry peers are saying in those events. And it's a good chance for you to let people know that you're interested in cybersecurity. You can talk about the training courses that you've done in cybersecurity and you should ask if they have any internship or if they're hiring cybersecurity professionals. You never know. So many people get hired this way. Trust me on this one. Which brings me to the fifth and possibly the biggest mistake of all, which is mistake number five, obsessing over which cybersecurity specialization to choose. Look, I get it. Choosing which cybersecurity specialization is really hard because you're still early on in your journey and you're not really sure what each specialization is really like. So it's perfectly normal to be confused early on. However, a few things will put you to ease. First, a cybersecurity specialization 
is not a life sentence. Just because you chose to specialize in something like ethical hacking doesn't mean that you won't be allowed to change your specialization later on. But second and most importantly is that chances are you will end up changing your specialization. I did it, most individuals I know have done it as well. As you gain more experience and as you grow and as you learn more stuff, there will be a lot more doors that will open to you that you didn't even know existed. And the good news is whatever you learn in, in one specialization is highly transferable to another specialization. In fact, it will make you a more well-rounded cybersecurity professional. Now, if you come from a non-technical background, like let's say nursing or accounting, or if you're just starting out, then as I said earlier, there is a non-technical side in cybersecurity we refer to as GRC, which I talked about in detail in this video, and I'll see you there.